Welcome to another episode of Living Your Spark Second Half. Today's episode is something that happened to me recently. And as I was reflecting on it, when all was said and done, I thought, oh my gosh, this would make a great podcast episode because I know this has happened to you. And if it hasn't happened to you and you've been one of the very few lucky ones, it probably will. <laughs> Before you die, it will happen to you because our plans can get derailed. And we do get disappointed when that happens. And our friends sometimes bail on us. And that happened to me. And so I thought about this as I was not only processing it in the moments that it was happening when I was first realizing she was bailing on me, and then afterwards, and how different I am now than my younger self, and how I would handle the situation so much differently when I was younger, and how we have the power to change the outcome of these situations, to change our disappointment. Not that we don't have the disappointment, but that we don't have to sit and dwell on the disappointment. And so I'm going to walk you through my experience. I'm also going to give you a little context about um, how in the past I have done specific situations where I've done things differently and horribly, and I wished I could have that time back and have the wisdom I have now. But I came up with some tips because as I was reflecting, I thought these are the five things that I think everyone, when they have a disappointment, when a plan goes array, when somebody bails on them, this is these are the tips I think you should follow. And that really helped me. So let's get right to my experience, my most recent experience. Yep, it happened. One of my besties bailed on me. And it was a trip that was planned for quite some time. In fact, we were flying together to go to a wedding in another state. <laughs> and it was the wedding of our other besties, we're all college besties. We met in college. We've been friends since we met in 1977. So we were going to travel and the college roommate whose daughter was getting married only had seven spots to invite people because it was going to be a big wedding. And of course, when you have big weddings, the friends of your mother, and then she's from the, the bride, some a divorced family. So when you bring in divorced people and the extra step parents, and she's also been married twice. So there's the ex-husbands were there. There's a lot of people on the wedding list. And honestly, when you get married, you want your friends there. And so friends from college of your mother's are usually not high on the list. So I was happy to make the cut. So we had talked about going on this trip. We coordinated our the flights. It was a two-leg flight. So we were going to meet at the airport halfway and take the final together and sit together and all the fun things that you do when you travel with a friend. We were going to stay in a hotel room together. Her husband was covering the hotel room with points. We were going to share a rental car. We had the whole weekend planned and I was very excited. I was going to take Friday off work. So it was really going to be an extended weekend. We were going to St. Augustine. She had never been to St. Augustine. So we were very excited about, uh, I was excited about showing her St. Augustine. I've been there and I love it. So we had little excursions planned of outside of the wedding, which was going to happen on Saturday. So we were going to come home late on Sunday. So we're going to have part of Friday and all day Sunday to do our thing. And so when you have a girl's weekend planned, for me, I don't know about you, it's one of the highlights of my life. I get so excited. I actually go out and shop and look for new clothes. <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't try to impress my husband when we go out with new clothes. I try to impress my college 
roommates. I want to look good for them. I always have so much fun with them. And when we get together, we go shopping. I often will buy things that I normally wouldn't buy for myself. So it's so funny. But if you have these besties in your life, they're like my soulmates. I just feel like I knew them in another life. It's just that connection from the time we met. She was my sweet mate and she was random, totally random. And we became best buddies. So I got a call a few days before the wedding from her. And first of all, she sounded sick. She had a bad cold and she had just recently gotten over COVID. She had a number of things happen recently. It was just a lot going on in her life. So I think the stress of that made her get sick. So she called me and told me that her father had made a plan to get a knee replacement. And I guess he had recently fallen. So it became important. It became it, like they had to expedite it and they could only fit him in at certain times. So he was actually going to go in on the next day to go get knee replacement. And she's an only child and he's like 92, very healthy, very active. But the burden was on her to be there for him. So she was very stressed about juggling him and getting him to a place where he could be good enough that she felt comfortable leaving. And so something that she didn't have a lot of control over, I didn't have a lot of control over, I had zero control over. I felt like if it were me, I would try to reschedule his knee replacement. That's me. I would not miss my girl's weekend. And that's what we do a lot of times. When we have a, plans that change that we don't have control over, we always second guess how we would have done it. And it's always better, right? We think we could have done it better. We could have made other arrangements. We could have done this. We could have done that. We don't ever, I, well, I should say I, don't do a good job of putting myself in the other person's shoes. So, and I'll get to that when I talk about one of the tips. So they were proceeding with the knee replacement. She wanted to switch our flight to earlier on Sunday and navigate getting to the airport. So it was going to be a two hour difference. Me, I'm thinking two hours doesn't really make a big difference deal to me in terms of timing. Why why go to the effort of calling the airline, also getting charged for changing your flight for just two hours earlier? However, if she was going to change her flight, I had to change my flight because we were sharing a car and I didn't want to sit around the airport for two hours. So fortunately, and I don't know if this was just a premonition I had, Rarely when I book a flight, do I do the option where you can cancel and or change your flight because that's more expensive. However, when I went to go do it, she messaged me the next morning and said she paid $100 to change her flight. So I knew there was good intent on her part to make the weekend work. I didn't get charged. I was able to change it with no problem. So the night before we were supposed to leave, I actually think it was like 36 hours. So we were supposed to leave on Friday morning, Wednesday night, after two days of him having his knee replacement in recovery, he wasn't doing well. And so he was just in a lot of pain. That was essentially it. It wasn't like he was on death's door. It's just knee replacements are a bear. And if you have had one or know someone, they are like the worst most painful thing that you could have happen if you're scheduled for one. I'm sorry, but that is the truth. Pain pills are your best friend. So she, he was just in a lot of pain and he had stayed an extra day in the hospital. So obviously she was concerned and she said, I can't go. I can't go on the trip. And my immediate response was, and as I was thinking about how I was going to say this, I first thought I was pissed. And then I was thinking, 
Well, it wasn't really pissed. It was disappointed. It was such a deep disappointment that I would not be able to have the weekend that I thought I would have. I was not going to be able to spend the weekend sipping coffee, catching up, sitting on the bed till all hours of the night, talking about the latest thing in our lives with our kids and our grandkids, the things that we did when we were in college, but it was at a different level because it was just about the boys we liked. And that is what I lost in the moment. And I was just super sad. And, and you could say pissed. Yeah. Because I'm like, I felt if it were me, I could have made it happen, but I'm not her. I'm not an only child. She is a nurturer. If you've ever met a nurturer, I'm not a nurturer type. I'm like, you could take care of yourself, dad. That would be me. So she couldn't leave him. And I was thinking she has kids. They're grown. They can be there for her dad for a couple of nights. So what I did, and that's where I want to get, I want to give you a little bit of that backstory. And I wanted to then share the tips and how I think I recovered from that really quickly. And of course, one of the things you think when you're pissed or when you're disappointed, which is, I think, a better word, because I was pissed at the situation, not necessarily at her, because I knew that she didn't have or she didn't think she had control of the situation, that she had to do what she had to do. And that's the older Lori. The younger Lori would have been pissed at her. It would have been like, it's all your fault. And you're doing this to me. And those are the things I would have thought. So in the older version of me was very quickly able to know it was out of my control, out of her control, and she had to do what she had to do. But I still felt the feels. And my first tip is it's okay to feel the feels. You can be disappointed. You can be pissed. You can feel like, dang it. Now my weekend is going to be shit. (laughs) That's kind of what you think, right? Because you had this vision of what it was going to be and it was going to be fantastic. And that was no longer possible. And so I, in that moment, thought, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. She's not going. I don't want to go. And then I thought, oh, my gosh, how horrible if our friend whose daughter was getting married and only had these finite spots to give to her friends didn't have two of her friends come to the wedding. So out of the seven spots, two wouldn't come. And that broke my heart. And I was like, no matter what, I'm going, I'm going. So it's okay to feel the feels. Don't feel guilty for feeling the feels. But feel the feels for the other person. Feel the feels because if somebody is backing out of a planned trip or commitment, there's something going on with them. And we can't, even though we try, (laughs) we don't know what's going on inside of their head. And although I thought if I were in her shoes, I would have done things differently. I know who she is and I know she couldn't do that. And so feel the feels for yourself, but feel the feels for the other person. And then that brings me to tip number two. Reframe your thoughts. And I am so proud of myself that I did this so quickly. It was like within five minutes, I started to reframe my thoughts into the positive. It's like the lack and abundance thing. In the moment when you first get disappointed, it's all about the lack, what I don't have, what I don't know. 
But if you can spin it to what you do have and what you're thankful for, and like I mentioned with tip one, feel the feels, but feel the feels for them, turn your thoughts away from yourself to find the positive. How is this impacting me to the other people involved? And that helps a lot when you deflect the personal and you look at and have the empathy for the other people involved. Because I know she wanted the weekend. Who would choose spending a weekend with a 92-year-old man who had just had a knee replacement? <laughs> and I did talk to her later during the weekend. And she was like, it's hot in here. He's watching the shows he wants to watch. And I am miserable. So I didn't know that in the moment when she canceled. But as she was telling me later, I was like, oh my gosh, I had even more empathy for her. So we quickly jumped to how is this impacting me? But I encourage you as you reframe how is it impacting my friend? How is it impacting this person that had to bail on me? And then it's easier to feel less disappointed. Not that I'm still not disappointed that my weekend is not going to be what I thought it was going to be, but that at least I'm not having to miss it. <laughs> and then I started getting more positive about the benefits of me going alone. Tip number three, as I mentioned, empathy. Empathy. Always give the person the benefit of the doubt. We're terrible about that as human beings because we're so self-involved typically. How is this impacting me? Oh my gosh, my weekend's now ruined. It's not going to be what I thought it was going to be. And that's our tendency. It's just a human being thing for most people. You might be an extraordinary person that is always empathetic. And there are people who are empaths and they think about other people and they might not be like me, but I'm like me, 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 me. And so... I used to never give people the benefit of the doubt. That was, I look back and I think, oh my gosh, I just didn't have that empathetic muscle. And when you don't have that empathetic muscle, it's so much harder to get out of the disappointment. When you move your thoughts to someone else, it just almost is like kryptonite to disappointment. So that's tip number three is give him or her, the person doing the disappointing, the benefit of the doubt. Because I guarantee you, they're not intentionally disappointing you. And they're probably in the process feeling disappointed themselves. So tip number four, and this goes back to reframe your thoughts to positive, Think of ways that you can still move forward with your plans. Somebody bailed, you can still do what you're going to do. And I think sometimes, especially with trips, people think, oh, I can't go on my trip now. I just recently interviewed somebody on my podcast who went and walked the Camino Trail in her 60s by herself. Now, that was her plan to go by herself, but what if she had somebody who had committed to go with her and then bailed. And what she talks about on that solo journey was how much she learned about herself. When you're yapping with somebody else the whole weekend, you're not going to do much reflection on yourself. So think of the ways that you can still do what you wanted to do. And I would say to make a list, immediately get to work change your thoughts, sit down, make a list. That gets you out of disappointment really quickly. So I thought 
I have a nice hotel room at a very nice resort. I don't know if you watch golf, but there is a tournament where there's this hole 17 is on a little island and it's a famous golf hole. That's where I was. Sawgrass Resort. Beautiful view. Well, I didn't know that at the time, but as I was making my list, I knew it was going to be a really nice hotel and that I have it all to myself and that I'd get some much needed downtime. So downtime, nice hotel room, downtime, more quality time with the people that I'm going to be with at the wedding. You know, when you come as a couple to something or a pair, you're kind of, there's like this internal non-spoken commitment where you kind of have to hang together, go to the bathroom together, sit together. I had conversations I wouldn't have had had I gone with her. So I was thinking, I'm going to have quality time with people that I wouldn't have likely had if I was busy chit-chatting with her. And I was going to spend less money. I thought, oh, that's a good thing because I'm not going to go down to St. Augustine and go to shops. I'm not going to go eat at restaurants down there. So I'm going to come away, even though I had to pay for my rental, that was nothing compared to the money I would have spent going with her. And then number five, my fifth tip is forget about what you can't change and focus on your list and the fun you'll have. Because when you focus on the anticipated fun, if you can get yourself into that positive reframe and imagining what that looks like, it will happen. It will be a great time. You will have fun and it will be better than you thought because of the disappointment that you had. We tend to dwell on the lost, on the desired that we didn't get. This is different than a desire that hasn't come yet. This is a desire I had to have this weekend with my friend and it was no longer possible. And I could have festered on that. I could have thought about and been mad at her and just spent all of my brain cells on something that would have made me feel feel bad. So you, you feel the feels, but you get over the feels. You get over the negative feels and move to the positive feels. And check in with your friend. I remember, and this is the same friend. Back when I was a young married woman and I got mad at her for something ridiculous, I was the first one to have kids. And I think, and it's all a bit fuzzy, but I think what I got mad at her for was that I was having a baby shower and she didn't come. She lived out of town. She was lived a couple hours away from me. And she, I think that's what it was. It was something that I felt was major. And so... I didn't speak to her. And it might have even been earlier than that because my whole pregnancy, you don't have a baby shower till the end. So I don't want to misspeak. It was, I think it was something earlier on in my pregnancy that she did that pissed me off. And I held on to that pissy feeling, angry feeling, mad at her for whatever I now can't even remember. Isn't that funny? Can't even remember the stupid thing. But what I do remember is we didn't talk. We didn't talk the entire time I was pregnant. One of my best friends of life, bestie, BFF, best friend forever. And we didn't talk for months. Now that's dwelling. And I had the baby. She wasn't there for me. Very sad. Thought about her a lot, obviously. So this is what we do to ourselves. And then one day... Shortly after my daughter was born, I went to my mailbox and there was a letter from her. She broke the ice. Multi-page handwritten letter. We don't get those anymore, do we? 
And we've never, ever had a fight again. And I never, ever want to feel that way again. And that likely is part of my growth. I was so immature and so young and so in my own selfish head about me, 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 not even thinking and considering what's going on in her life. Looking back now, she wasn't even married. Who who knows anything about having a baby? And uh, there, I'm sure a lot, a lot of other things going on in her life at the time, but I didn't have the empathy. I didn't have the capability of having the empathy for her. And so that's why I want you to always, always think about the other person, even if that person is disappointing you. There's something else going on that is causing them disappointment. And we just can't see it because we're looking, and I talk about this a lot with my students and in my free training I've done, it's like we have these glasses on and we only see one color through them. But our, our person is looking at glasses, but completely different lens and color. And if we just try to put our glasses down and be more open about the possibilities, so no cold shoulders or silent treatment. When you go and do what you're going to do, because you're going to do it anyway, you check on your friend. And you make sure that friend knows you still love her or him. And I remember the recent thing that happened. I remember she called me and I didn't know she called me. Sometimes on my phone, I don't get the notification on. I don't check my voicemail all the time. I'm not looking there because we text so much in this world. And she was, we were texting. And so I didn't see a call from her. And then I saw like two days later, I saw, well, actually, I think it was before I left. So if she bailed on me like 36 hours, it was probably 24 hours later. It was before I left. But like a day later, I saw her messages, her voicemail messages. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I felt so bad. I thought she thinks I'm mad. I bet she thinks I'm mad. And so I called her and she did think I was mad. And I'm not mad. I wasn't mad. I was mad for five minutes. But those are the tips that I would say will get you moved through and process that disappointment of plans. Do not go as you wish they did. I'll run through them one more time. Number one, it's okay to feel the feels. It's okay. Feel the feels, but don't stay mad. No silent treatment. Number two, navigate through your feelings by turning your thoughts to positive. Think of the other person instead of yourself. Be empathetic in that. Three, give the person the benefit of the doubt. Try to put yourself in that person's shoes and be open to that. We assume that we know what's going on And you know what they say about assume. So give the benefit of the doubt to the other person. Number four, think of the ways you can still move forward and do what you want. Make a list of the positives. Think abundantly. Five, don't dwell. Forget about what you can't change and focus on your list. Focus on and visualize what you want to create. And that's what you put on your list. So that's what you can use for that to help you manifest the weekend or the trip or the experience that you maybe didn't expect, but will get. And it it can be fantastic. And I will tell you that my weekend turned out to be amazing. I had such a great time. And I think sometimes when a weekend turns out not the way you thought it would, and you kind of start with disappointment, it becomes, of course, better than you could have imagined. 
because you had this like great image of what it was going to be. And then it dropped to this like image of, oh my gosh, it's not going to be that. And then you go and you move forward and it is great in a different way, in a different way. And I had great conversations. I got to talk to and spend a meal talking to my college friend who was the mother of the bride, her father and his lady friend. And he's in his, I think he's 89, danced till the end, danced till the end. And I hadn't seen him. I, we figured out it was like 19 years. I hadn't seen him for 19 years. And so it was so good to catch up with him. I sat next to her sister, got to catch up with her. It was just so much fun. I enjoyed the hotel being by myself, walking around. I got went and had dinner at the bar and met the coach of the GMU basketball team, had a ball talking to him and his assistants. So yeah, I mean, so many fun things happened. And I got to drive with my friend and her new boyfriend who I hadn't met, who and they came from California. So pretty serious. I would have never been able to spend the time in the car with them if I had been with my friend. And I sat with him at the at the service. So there were a lot of opportunities as I had on my list when I had thought about the upcoming trip, about the quality time with people that I wouldn't have had the chance to be with. So it all turned out really great. And there might be something in your near future, especially with the holidays coming up, holidays are rife with disappointment of plans going haywire, not going as you thought they would go, especially at this time of year, people are getting sick. My husband just had COVID. So yeah, things happen and we just have to roll with it and make the best of it. And so these tips are my gift my early Christmas gift to you to help you navigate the situations where somebody either bails on you, as in my case, or plans change and you don't have any control over it. And that is life. It happens. So have a great holiday. I haven't done a solo episode for a while and I really enjoy it. I miss doing it. So I'll do more of them. Uh, I need to do little short snippets of them because sometimes a short one is just good enough, but I get going. <laughs> I get going when I get on here. All right. Have fun this holiday season doing whatever you do and enjoy. And I'm going to do an episode on wrapping up 2023 because that'll be a good one. Thank you so much for tuning into the Living Your Spark Second Half podcast. If you'd like to watch my guest interviews, you can find the video version of this podcast on my Not Your Average Grandma YouTube channel. Also, you can check out what I have going on at the moment by going to my website at notyouraveragegrandma.com or find me on Instagram or Facebook at Not Your Average Grandma. If you like this episode, please mention it to a friend and don't forget to leave a review so I know the topics you like best and can bring you more of that content in upcoming episodes. Last but not least, remember to always listen to that inner voice that will never steer you wrong and make living from the most sparked place possible your biggest priority. When we do that, we make the world a better place.